This is the day the Lord has made. This is the day the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is Easter Sunday morning, and I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord uh, just one more time. Amen. It was David who said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall always be on my lips. So even on an Easter Sunday that's not like Easter Sunday of past times, past years, we still have a reason on this Easter Sunday morning uh, to give God praise and to acknowledge that God is still blessing us even now, even in this unusual Easter Sunday morning for me uh, to be standing here and you watching me at home, uh, I'm still grateful to God that we're able to, to, to worship together one more time, even in this setting. Uh, we ought to rejoice in the Lord because our God is, yes, worthy of all of our praise. Good morning to you there, St. John, and I hope, I hope you are well and, and excited as I am and still thankful as I am uh, to be uh, uh, among the living, that the Lord woke you up this morning and started you on your way. That is reason enough to want to thank God, to want to give him some praise on Easter Sunday morning. Uh, let me just mention that I want you to continue church family to be in prayer keep lifting one another up in prayer keep praying uh, for our church family we have members who who are in the hospital and, and some who have lost uh, loved ones doing this this stretch and so let's let's keep one another uh, in prayer let's keep each other before God remember uh, to keep praying uh, for our first responders and uh, the doctors and nurses who are caring uh, for COVID uh, patients and ICU rooms. Uh, so let's just, just be in a spirit, uh, in a posture of prayer, uh, acknowledging God uh, on this Easter Sunday morning. I want to have a word of prayer with you, and then we'll get going. We'll look at a text together uh, on today and see what the Lord has in store for us on this Sunday morning. God, how we love you, how we praise you, and how we thank you, God, how we magnify you, how we, how we lift you up. And so, God, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Oh, God, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. We thank you, God, for loving us in such a splendid way, an unbelievable way, God, that you would come into this dark world uh, to die for a sinner such as I. And so we thank you, God, on this Easter Sunday morning for Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. And it's in that precious name we pray. We ask you, God, to forgive us. Forgive us, O oh God, of all our sins, to cleanse us, God, through and through. We pray, God, that you would just bless us for the time we spend together. That you would fill us, God, with your spirit and your word. Remember those who are sick among us, God, those who are deeply sorrow. We ask you, God, to cover them, O oh yes, by the blood of Jesus, by the comforting arms and loving arms of Jesus to Christ. Now hide us, O oh God, in thy bosom is our prayer, for it's in Jesus' name we pray and we do thank you. Amen. Amen. I want us to look at a familiar text this morning, very familiar passage of scripture found in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16 is what we want to look at together. It's Mark chapter 16, beginning at verse 1, and we look at verse 1 through uh, verse 8, Mark chapter 16, beginning at verse 1 through verse 8, when it says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices that they may go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb but when they looked up they they saw that the stone which was very very large had been rolled away 
And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Amen, amen. The Bible said these women was on their way early one Sunday morning on their way to the tomb of Christ. And while they were walking on their way to the tomb of Christ, there was a question they raised among each other. Who's going to help us? That was the question that they raised on their way to the tomb of Christ. Who's gonna help us? That, that's the question, people of God, on this Easter Sunday morning, I believe. It's a question being raised uh, uh, across the globe. It's a question that's being raised here at home uh, in, in, in America and and, and being raised, you know, here in San Antonio, and I'm sure here among many of us uh, at St. John, we've had some days, uh, uh, but we have raised the question, who's going to help us? That, that, that question has been raised the other day, the other day, listening to the news, and, and the comment was made that 16, 16 million, 16 million people applied for unemployment on last week. 16 million people applied for unemployment last week. Last week. So you know that, that there's 16 million people, families, uh, providers, who's raising the question, who's going to help us? Doctors and, and nurses who are working in ICU units, uh, caring uh, uh, for patients who, who left alone in the hospital. Uh, uh, family members uh, can't visit them. Uh, uh, those doctors and nurses uh, uh, in ICU uh, treatment rooms are wondering in the morning at noon, and I'm sure even late at night, on their way to work, on their way home, they are wondering who is going to help us. Who is going to help us? Even we, as a people of color, just the other day, I, I heard that, 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 that some 70% of, of people who expired in Louisiana, uh, in, in Chicago, 70% uh, of them were African Americans. That, that, that once again, uh, uh, we, as a people, uh, tend to seem to suffer more than others when things like this happen. And so even among us, I'm sure there are many, many of folk in, in black households who are walking around and, 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 and wondering to themselves and probably holding their heads, wondering who is going to help us. I mean, that's the question that's being raised on this Easter Sunday morning. We are wondering who it is that's going to help us. And I'm so glad that that question is on our hearts and on our minds because if, any, if it's any Sunday that, that, that you can get an answer to that question is Easter Sunday morning. Because Easter Sunday morning remind us of what it means to be with the Lord. You know that when you are with the Lord and when the Lord is with you, you have the answer to that question. The Psalms is said over there in Psalms 118, verse 7 and 8, he talks about, he says, the Lord is with me, you know, and so he is my helper. 
it, it, when, when God is with us, we have God, what? As our helper. And so if, any, if there's any time of the year that we can be reminded, I want to shout, I want to praise God, amen, that, that we have him on our side, that even though we are facing a pandemic, even though we don't have the answer, the God that we serve, he is our helper. When God is with us, we can look at our enemies, the Bible says, with a look of triumph. Oh, that's shouting stuff right there. That, 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 that means before the battle starts, you know, uh, that you're already looking at your enemy, amen, with, with eyes and a heart and a mind of triumph. And so if, if we ever keep our eyes on God, we can be certain that we're going to beat this pandemic. I, I feel pretty good. I'm so glad that the Lord is on our side. This text rings and, and, and have a deeper meaning, meaning for me on, on this Easter Sunday. Uh, we have preached uh, uh, this text over the years. A number of times we've heard biblical narratives about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so this Sunday, when you look at the text in front of us, Brother Mark, who, who we believe was the first writer of the Gospels, uh, uh, we believe that Brother Matthews and, and Luke uh, actually used Mark's writings. And so here's Brother Mark, who is really an action writer. And so he captures for us what happened on that Sunday morning. Uh, uh, here it is. We are, we are removed from, from, from Friday. Uh, removed from, from, from that Thursday where Jesus is kept up all night. Amen. And, and, and march from judgment hall to judgment hall. Amen. He, he had to face, like, like some people we know, uh, a criminal justice system uh, uh, that was tilted against him. Uh, uh, he didn't have a fair trial. And so he, he ended up, amen, on death row. Uh, the way the Romans uh, would, would check you and control things was that they would crucify folk that are condemned, folks who are found guilty. And so Jesus Christ is crucified on a cross on Friday. Friday is a horrible day. It's a, it's a, it's a dark day for those who are followers of Jesus. Because on Friday, uh, even, even uh, one on the cross said to Jesus that you have, you have, you have helped others, others and you have saved others. And, and he asked Jesus, if you are who you say you are, won't you get down? Won't you save yourself and us? And so they were wondering on Friday, where is this God who fed 5,000? Where is this God who, who gave sight? to the blind. Where, where is this God that, that cast out demons? Where is this God who walked on water? They're wondering where is he? He looks like he looks like, like he's a fake on Friday. He dies on Friday and they rush him off and place him in a barred tomb. Yeah. Uh, 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 they, they had to get Jesus buried real quick, you see, because it was the Sabbath. Ain't it funny how we can do dirt and, and, and then get righteous real quick? So they, 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 they want to bury him before the Sabbath because the Sabbath uh, is something they want to keep holy. So they place him, they rush him off, bury him in a barred tomb. But on this Sunday morning in the text, it's early Sunday morning when these women that shouldn't surprise us that these women are the ones headed to the tomb of Jesus. In Mark's gospel, chapter 27, Brother Mark, Brother Matthews, I should say, in his gospel, chapter 27, Matthews make mention that these women had followed Jesus, that they had been with Jesus all the way from Galilee. They followed Jesus throughout his ministry. And so in Matthew's chapter 27, around verse 55, it talks about many women were standing at a distance. They were watching Jesus when he died on the cross. They watched them place Jesus in his grave. And so as soon as the women can, 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 can get to Jesus, the Bible captures them getting up early in the morning on their way to Jesus' grave. 
Uh, it shouts me when I look at this text about the women because, because when I look at this text about these women, I see that these women, they are wandering and they're going. Let me say it for you one more time because some of y'all didn't get that. I know it's early in the morning. Y'all didn't get that. I say these women, they are wandering and they're going. Uh, uh, the Bible says that, that, that they got up early in the morning uh, while it's still dew on the ground. It's, it's, still, it's still a little dark outside. And, 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 and they're on their way uh, 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 to the tomb of Christ. Uh, and the Bible says that they are wondering who's going to help us roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb. Uh, Y'all might have missed that. Th th these women, uh, they don't have a title, they're not bishop, they're not apostles, uh, they don't have PhDs, uh, they're not licensed preachers. Uh, uh, it's, it's just some women that, that, that love Jesus, that supported his ministry, and we see them in scripture, even in his death, we see them still willing and wanting to serve Jesus. I, I wish I wish I was here because I'd be messing with y'all right here because Easter Sunday morning ought to remind us that it's not how you dress up on Easter. It ought to remind us of how we serve in him. You know, they, they got up early in the morning because they wanted to do something for Jesus. Uh, well, I've been struggling with this part of this text because, because of where we find ourselves because of this pandemic. Uh, 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 we find ourselves, uh, the church, along with the rest of the world, the business community, uh, the educational community, uh, uh, professional sports. I mean, everybody is locked out of their stuff. Everybody locked out of their businesses. We, we are locked out of our schools and people of God. God then locked us out of the church on Easter Sunday morning. Ha, ha, ha. I got to look at this thing uh, because, because the woman in this text, uh, to me, it's a radical behavior for the women in the text to, to be on their way, not just anybody's tomb. They're on their way to Jesus' tomb who were crucified on Friday. Uh, uh, let me help y'all. Y'all not getting me. Y'all not feeling me yet. Let me help you here. That, that these women are on their way to the tomb of Jesus while the disciples are sheltering in place. Oh, okay, y'all. Uh, 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 the, the disciples, the Bible says that, that the disciples of Christ were locked up. They were locked up uh, uh, in fear of the Jews. And, and, and so it's fear on this Sunday morning that, that have that have the church and, and, and have and have the rest of the world. We, we are fearful now of dying uh, uh, if we if we are infected by a virus and it's out of our fear that we are what? We are sheltering in place. What, what, what trips me out in this moment, y'all, y'all don't y'all don't tune me out yet. What I'm struggling with is that. Is that while while and I'm and look at here I'm down with with the sheltering in place you know I'm 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 here pretty much by myself this morning so 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 I'm down with it I understand the importance of it but but I also understand that I believe what it's showing me is that the church have lost some of its edge that that we are not as radical as the women in the Bible. We got folk now, preachers, talking about loving your neighbor is sheltered in place. We got preachers trying to explain uh, 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 how important it is that we stay home. And, and I hear what they're saying, but we also got to understand that there's a radical God which we read about in Scripture. These women going to the tomb of Christ when, when the men are sheltering in place is a radical move. It, it's a crazy faith and, and commitment that they have to God that, that even if everybody else is, is, is sheltering in place, these women are saying, but I got to praise God today. I, I, I got to go and do the best I can for God because God's been good to me. 
And so why are we putting our lips on churches who are who are open today and, and going to have people yeah, in those uh, sacred places? Uh, we ought to be careful that we don't put our lips on them. If anything, just pray for them and hope that, that they get in and get out and make it back home well because the God we serve, he is radical. God don't, look, God hardly ever go along with the government. I mean, when God, when he brought them out of Egypt, Pharaoh said, stay put. God said, leave. God, God had folk to leave Egypt with Pharaoh's army, chariots and horsemen were after God's people and, and they had to cross a Red Sea. When, when, when God, look, when God brought them across the Jordan River, they couldn't just pray in the tent the Bible said, when you see the ark of the Lord pass your tent, leave your house and get behind the ark of the Lord. I mean, God is radical. They, look, Jericho walls didn't come down because they sheltered in place. Jericho walls came down because they left their tents and walked around Jericho. And on the seventh day, seven times. Where is that God? My brothers and sisters, uh, Easter is about a radical God too. Yeah, it's about a, a loving Savior, but, but Jesus was radical. He didn't go along to get along. And so in this text, we see these women, it's a radical faith they have. Uh, uh, they're wondering about who's going to help us. They're wondering about how we're going to handle that stone. But if you notice, what they're wondering about didn't stop them from going to the tomb. I'm trying to say to somebody on this Easter Sunday morning, when, when God let us get back together again, when we get back together in church again, I hope that when you come back, when God let us back in his house of worship, that, 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 that things that we are wondering about, things that we are uncertain about, things we don't know, things we understand, things that we might be a little scared of, I hope that we have enough faith in God like the women in the text this Easter Sunday morning that we are, look, we are see ourselves going after God's purpose and going after God's will and not wondering about and worrying about things we cannot handle ourselves. They, they, they were wondering but they were going. Uh, uh, here's something else that shouts me about the women wandering and going. The Bible says that, that, that these women uh, had these spices with them. Uh, uh, they, they, had, they, 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 they got these spices with them and, 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 and they on their way uh, uh, to the tomb of Christ. Uh, the plan is, is to give him a proper burial. Uh, I'm going to shout you with this right here. You might notice in the text that, that, that what the women are carrying with them to the tomb of Christ is, is the very thing that Jesus don't need. And let me help y'all again. Y'all missed that. So, so here it is. They, they, they have spices uh, that they're carrying with them to the tomb of Jesus to give him a proper burial. And, and what they have for Jesus, uh, 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 what, what they're carrying, what they're taking to Jesus uh, for ministry is the very thing that Jesus don't need. Uh, I wish I was here. You'd be shouting right now. That, 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 what are you saying, Pastor Price? I'm saying that, 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 that in the new season, when, 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 when God let us come back together again, uh, we don't want to come back the way we left. Uh, we we want to come back not showing up with something we want God to have, but show up with the very something God want you to have, something God want to use, something God want to do in your life. You show up, just make yourself available because what he did not want, he didn't want the spices, he needed the women. They, they, they never used the spices, but he used the women. 
Huh, huh, that shouted me this time when I looked at that text. I had read it a whole lot of times, but 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 I never paid attention to the fact that 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 they had something in their hands that they thought God needed. And sometimes we come to the kingdom of God, sometimes we come before God with things in our hands that we think God ought to be satisfied with, or we think this is what God wants me to do, or we're usually doing things that we are comfortable with, or things we can wrap our heads around. But in this next season, we got to make ourselves available unto God and let God tell us how he want to use us. They showed up with spices. Something he didn't need. He needed the women. He needed the women. He said, I don't need the spices, but I, I, need, the, I need the women. Uh, uh, because, because the brothers uh, are sheltering in place. Uh, the brothers are running scared. They, they weren't about being the next one crucified. And, 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 but God has a way. There's always a ram in the bush. Nobody, nobody thinks that, that the women are going to be so bold uh, to get up on the first day of the week and go to the tomb of Jesus Christ as they did. Well, next thing we see in this text, in verses 4 and 5, it says, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. Oh, Y'all see that? The Bible said they're on their way. And the Bible says, but when they looked up, the thing they were talking about, when, when the thing they were wondering about, when, when, when they arrived at the tomb of Christ, the Bible says, but when they looked up, they saw that God had already solved their problem. What, what are you saying, Pastor Bryce? I'm saying that the text is teaching us on this Easter Sunday morning, not only should we be wandering and going, but, but it shows us this Easter Sunday morning our need to look up. Our need to look up. We, 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 we got to understand that, 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 that we, we have a need to look to God. And, and that God want us to look to him. Uh, you hear the psalm writer saying, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which come in my help. And so, and so we're in a season, people of God, where we got to stop having more confidence in man and more confidence in ourselves and, and remember that God want you and I to look to him not, not just for big stuff but God want us to look to him for all things. Uh, that what Brother James said. Brother says, Brother James says that we ought to we ought to consult God. We ought to look to God before we make any plans. He said, because life is but a vapor, that, that we're here today and we're gone tomorrow. Uh, I messed up some of my friends uh, 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 most recently uh, when it was time uh, to try to set a tea time for golf. We was trying to get a foursome together and, and, and they text me about whether or not I was going to play and, and I said I would be there but I said it this way. I said if God is willing I'll be there tomorrow morning. It messed them up. When I got there we had a fivesome. I said, I thought we had four. He said, well, I didn't know if you were coming or not the way you were talking. I said, no, that's just, that's just the way you talk, my brother. When we understand that life is but a vapor and that the things we are planning is a joke to God, that, that we need to check in with God Almighty and let him know that I'm considering you. I'm consulting with you. Is it okay with you that I do this or that? So here it is. We got to look up. We got to look up to God and not to man. Right now, because of our losses, we're worrying about losing our businesses. We're worrying about losing our homes and losing our jobs. Ha, ha, ha. A lot of us right now are looking to the CARE Act. Ha, we're looking to the CARE Act. There's a $2 trillion ha, ha, piece of legislation been, been passed. $2 trillion and $350 billion dollars of it uh, uh, is, is, is to help small businesses, uh, is to help hurting families. 
And, and if we're not careful, uh, uh, we'll think all our hope uh, is in that $350 billion. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll forget again that, that, that it was God that helped you build that house. Uh, the Bible said, let the Lord build a house that we labor, we labor in vain. So if God is building our homes and, 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 and building our families, our businesses, if God is the head of his church, that, that, that in this season, it's kind uh, 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 that the government have passed a bill they call the CARE Act. It's, it's great that the government want to care, but the one that really cares and the one who really looks after our every need is God. And maybe again, that God want you and I this Easter Sunday morning to remember to look to him. That's what Jesus did on Calvary's cross. He wasn't looking horizontal on Calvary's cross. Jesus was looking up. And we know he was looking to God in that moment because he, he said before he breathed his last breath, we hear him saying, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And so Jesus didn't go to Calvary all by himself. Jesus understood that what he was doing and what he had said was, was his father's will and it was for our joy. It was for our eternal salvation. And so Jesus, he sacrifices himself so you and I can have joy, unspeakable joy. So we can have an eternal uh, uh, life to spend an eternity one day with our God in heaven. We need the same spirit to understand that if we look up to God, God will help us. God will hear our cry. God will come see about us. We see that in that text. It's teaching us that. It said when they looked up and they saw that the stone had been rolled away. Uh, uh, interesting about this stone. Uh, uh, in Jesus' ministry, he stood in front of of Lazarus' grave. There was a stone that was across the entrance of Lazarus' grave. And God didn't help us move that one. In that biblical narrative, Jesus tells the people to take away the stone. He tells the people, if y'all have enough faith to believe in a God can get a dead man up after four days, then y'all move the stone out of the way. But, but, but in Mark 16, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not you and I moving that stone. We, we, didn't have, we didn't have the muscle. We didn't have the strength to move the stone from the entrance of that tomb. And so God in the text is teaching me, and I hope you get it, that, that there are stones, there are, there, there, are, there are very large stones in our lives. That, that we don't have the strength to move, but God will move the stone that you and I can't handle. Oh, there's, there's some families right now uh, trying to figure out how in the world did I lose my daddy or my mother or my, or my grandmother? Uh, how did I lose my husband? He was such a young man. My wife, such a young lady. Wait, there, there, there are people hurting on this Sunday morning. It's a stone that you and I can't take away. But, but if we look, if we look to God, the God of all comfort, it is that God on this Easter Sunday morning that will help us with the sorrows associated with a pandemic that man can't get his arms around. That God will give us strength in the storm. Oh, I like that. I like that our God will give us strength in the storm. That our God a move, yes he will, he'll move stones out of our way in life that you and I don't have the strength to handle. And so I'm not, because, because I know my God, he is truly able, I know God has brought me this far, St. John. I, I'm not rushing uh, uh, to fill out an application uh, to get anything from the CARE Act, uh, uh, because I know the God who cares. And, and, and he has, look, God has provided and God has kept his church. Uh, I'm saying that because, because churches are trying to figure out, can they get something from the CARE Act? And, and maybe they can and maybe they can't. But if I were the church people, I will, I will make sure I'm looking up to God. Uh, 
and, and not, not looking to the federal government uh, uh, to keep the church doors open. But I should, I, look, I'm looking to God. If God was bad enough to come out of heaven and die on Calvary's cross and then get up on Sunday morning with all power, heaven and earth in his hand, surely he can help me on the other side of this pandemic. Maybe the church have to have more faith in God in this season and less faith in man. I'm almost out of your way. I'm almost out of your way. He, look how this thing wrap up. Uh, wandering and going. A need to look up. The angel tell him, don't be alarmed by the question. The angel is saying to them, don't be alarmed by the question. The Bible said when they got there, the stone had been rolled away. When they stepped inside, they saw a young man dressed in all white, seated at the right hand of the place where Jesus had laid. And the Bible said that the women were alarmed. They were scared. And, and before they passed out like the Roman soldiers fainted, the angel said to the women, don't be alarmed by the question you have. Who's going to help us? The angel was really saying, I'm glad y'all had the question. And, and I'm here to answer the question. See, see, we usually afraid when, 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 when we are not thinking properly. You see, that, that, that the women showed up with spices. They showed up to the grave of Jesus looking for a dead Jesus. They, they didn't show up looking uh, 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 for a conqueror. Uh, they showed up looking for a dead Jesus. And, 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 and the angel says, uh, I know who you're looking for. The angel says, y'all looking for Jesus, a Nazareth, uh, uh, the one who was crucified. Then he says, in, in three words, he is risen. The angel said, I know y'all thinking bad. The reason why you're scared in this moment, because you're thinking bad. Now, now look at here. God had already given those women and his disciples uh, the answer to that weekend. Jesus had already said before he died, he predicted his death. And he told them on that third day, I'm going to get up with all power, heaven and earth in my hand. He said, when I get up, I'm going to meet you in Galilee. But, but, but like the women, sometimes we're not careful. We read everything but our Bible. Look, we study everything but the word of God. And when, when we forget about things that God has already promised you in his word, he already, the Bible already says that in a, in a pandemic, God can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or we can think. The Bible is clear that greatness is in us and not in this world. But we forget what God says and we panic in a pandemic. And so they forgot that Jesus had already given them a word of hope. That don't let Dark Friday mess you up. Uh, uh, I understand what a Dark Friday can do, but, but, but hold on to my word. The word said that he would die and he would get up. So here it is, their thinking is bad. They're, they're fearful because they're thinking bad. They're looking for a dead Jesus and the dead Jesus couldn't help them on that day and the dead Jesus can't help us today. Amen. We, we, we need, look, my faith is not in a dead Jesus, it's in a risen king. My, my faith is in Jesus who is the Lord of lords and the king of kings. And, 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 and so Easter reminds us that our faith is in him who came, who died, who rose, and who is seated at the right hand of God in heaven. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one, the one who died, the one who was crucified. He has gotten up. Then he says, y'all don't believe me. Come see the place. He shows them the, the scarf or the wrapping that Jesus 
probably had around his head his fold neatly and it's where he had laid. The angel gives them evidence uh, that the Lord has gotten up. Uh, he gives them a message. Uh, he said, I need you to go and tell the disciples and Peter that I've risen and that I've gone ahead of them into Galilee. All oh, that shouting stuff, that, that, that even, look at here, God is always ahead of us. Uh, 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 you, you and I are the late arrivals, but God is already ahead of us. God already know how this thing going to end. Uh, you know, he said, look, look, he, look, tell the disciples and Peter, the one that denied him. Let Peter know it's all right. I'm, we're cool. Tell Peter and the disciples to meet me in Galilee. And the Bible said those women, uh, they left that place trembling and bewildered. Uh, they left that place in awe. Look at here. They were surprised when they left that place. They were confused when they left that place. They left that graveyard running. Uh, uh, uh. They were afraid. They said nothing to nobody else, the Bible says. They only ran uh, to tell Peter and the disciples. Oh, I like that. I hope this Easter Sunday morning we still have some running in our feet and some clapping in our hands. I hope on this Easter Sunday morning while we're at our homes uh, having church sheltered in place, I hope somebody catch on fire in that place. Uh, that we still uh, have a reason on this Easter Sunday morning uh, to give God praise. Uh, and we got to give God praise because God has beat death and the grave. Uh, the Bible declares he is the first fruit of the resurrection. In other words, he is guaranteeing you and I that when this life is over, just as Jesus Christ got up from his grave, he promises you and I that one of these days you and I too will get up from our grave and we'll live life forevermore with the Lord in glory. Oh, that shouting stuff right there. I'm so glad I don't have to worry. I'm glad to report to you on this Sunday morning, you don't have to worry that God, he got us. God, God promised that he would never leave you. He will never forsake you. He promised us in his word that, that, that the gates of hell, he says, will never prevail against his church. And so the church is going to be all right. We're going to get back to church. But when we get back to church, I hope we come fired up. That we come with a deeper uh, conviction about our Christ, about our God, and that we want to live our lives in a way that brings glory and honor to God in the highest. I'm out of here, but I want to extend an invitation. Somebody here listening to me today didn't get up for all of this, but you're listening to me now and you may not know Christ as your personal Savior. You sitting at home, you don't know him, I want you to know you can. I like that piece in the text when he said to those ladies, tell my disciples and Peter. And Peter is where I want you to put your attention, your focus. Peter was somebody who felt that he had messed up so badly that he was not worthy of the relationship with God. He thought God had, had thrown him away. But I stopped by to tell you today that God has not, he has not thrown you, nor me, nor his church, nor this world away. That, that, that God is patient concerning his wrath and his judgment. And so while he's being patient, he's giving you and I time and space to get close to him, to get near to him. And so on this Sunday morning, if I were you, I would receive salvation today. I would do what one of the thieves did on the cross, the one who acknowledged that Jesus Christ was in fact the savior of the world. He, he, he acknowledged that Jesus Christ in fact was a king. And he said to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus promised to him this day, you are with me in paradise. I believe just as he promised that man that day on the cross that he would save his soul, he will save you on the day. 
You only have to believe in your heart and confess right where you are that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He is the Savior of the world. He is your Redeemer. If you can receive him and confess that and believe that in your heart, you are saved. I want you to follow that up as soon as you can. Get to a church, amen. Let that preacher know that I have received Christ as my personal savior and that preacher help you there. Take it from there, amen. Get in a, in a solid church, get in a Bible study and continue to grow in your faith. God will, God will surely take care of you. Thank you so much. God bless you. St. John, don't forget, don't forget, amen, that you can give to this church. Don't stop giving. You can give online. We have PayPal on our, on our uh, website, amen. We have an app you can use or you can mail your offering in to the church. Our, our members, you can stop by. We have people here Mondays and Wednesdays and Thursdays from 11 to 1 who, who have received your offering from you. So thank you so much. You've been so good in supporting uh, the church. Even during this pandemic, you've been good. So thank you so much, St. John, for that. We love you. Believe God continue to bless and keep you is my prayer. Be blessed. Happy Easter.